Tell me more about this pain. What does it feel like? This is a new requirement at UMass Medical School. Student Kevin O'Day face to face with an actor playing a patient, suffering after a recent surgery, taking Percocet, but still in a lot of pain. I don't think it was enough dose because it's not really helping. Kevin must assess the situation. So, so you think that I'm faking this pain? Absolutely not. Absolutely not, sir. But what I just want to, I think it's important that you understand the risks of taking these medications. The risks. For decades, prescription opiates were wildly overprescribed, leading to addiction. And when pills weren't available, all too often patients turned to heroin. Prescribers are part of the problem. We are part of what contributed directly to the overdoses and people becoming addicted. In 2015, Governor Baker brought all four Massachusetts medical schools together to develop core requirements for safer opioid prescription training, ranging from prevention to better understanding the disease. Dr. Melissa Fisher was part of that team. One of the things in terms of prevention is that we are teaching our students to talk more um, in more depth, I'd say, with their patients about how to talk with their patients about opiates. It's now also a requirement for UMass nursing students like Maggie mm -hmm. Donovan. And then keep it in a locked cabinet or a locked box. Okay. And then high up. Here she's okay. teaching the patient about safely uh, storing opiates right. while learning about finding the right balance for treatment and the best approach. Often these, these conversations have a lot of emotions behind them. These patients are in pain. Um, because, so they're not always having their best day. Um, and they're not always happy with what I have to say, um, so having good practice with that is important. The President's Opioid Commission is now recognizing Massachusetts prescriber education as a model. Is the next generation of prescribers who's going to come into this with a full dose of what works and what doesn't, how they should be prescribed, what the warning signs should be, and the fact that these things should be treated uh, with a high degree of caution and seriousness. Having the medical community Thinking the right way about this stuff uh, is a huge part of how we win. What's at risk by not doing this? The risk is that we continue to have a huge toll in our country in terms of this opiate epidemic and the enormous number of, of deaths and the destruction that it's causing to American families. Well, we really need to know best practices for prescribing, identifying that there could be a problem with our patients, and then knowing the resources to get them help and treatment. So. We need to be the solution as well. And what did you learn from this scenario? So from this was the perfect example of when is it appropriate to use these medications. Kevin, now a second year resident, and Maggie, a nurse practitioner, say they see the opioid epidemic affecting families every day. It's a big responsibility on my half you know, to sort of not contribute to the epidemic, but at the same time, you know, recognize that my patients are often in pain and they need it treated. And make sure that these opioids are doing something good for them so that we're managing the risk of an opioid medication with the benefits. That's Karen Anderson reporting for us tonight. It's not just the new medical students that are getting this training. All prescribers who have to renew their licenses, they have to take an opioid therapy and pain management class.